I'm Mrs. Carlson from Dillon Nature Center and I am coming to you outside of my yard today. I'm gonna go exploring. I've been inside my house for a little bit and you guys are out of school and I thought it would be fun to kind of just look around my yard and I don't know, see what kind of interesting things I could find. I was wondering if you would want to come along with me and then maybe you can go and explore around your house as well and see what kind of interesting things you might be able to find. We're going to explore using our five senses today. So your five senses are, hmm, do you know what they are? You can see with your eyes, you can smell with your nose, you can hear with your ears, you can taste with your tongue, and then you can feel with your fingers, right? Okay. We're gonna explore using our senses. You have them, I have them, and animals have them as well. Why do we have them? Is there a reason? I bet there is a reason. We can use our senses to keep us safe, to communicate with others, and to stay away from danger, and just to do all kinds of things to take care of our daily lives, our daily needs, and to get to where we need to be going. Animals are gonna do the same thing as well. They're gonna use their senses to communicate with others. Right now I'm hearing some birds. Birds are gonna to talk to one another and let each other know maybe there's danger around, or maybe there might be a bird who wants to attract another bird, and there might be a male bird singing and a female bird might hear that, she'll use her ears. Birds are also gonna communicate in other ways as well by being colorful. So they're gonna use their eyes to see birds and other things as well. So those birds might notice another bird being very colorful or maybe even, a do, even doing a dance. And those birds can communicate that way by their vision. Animals will use their noses often to help smell each other or to smell danger or to find food. Animals will use their sense of feeling to maybe find their way in a tunnel or to find their way through a dark place or to just find uh, each other. Animals will use their sense of taste to know if something is good to eat or not, just like you do. So animals use our senses in a similar way as you do to stay safe, to find each other, and to live their lives. So we're going to explore using our five senses. We might not use all of them today, but we're definitely going to use our eyesight. We're going to smell some things, we're going to feel some things, and we're going to listen to some things. Are you ready to explore my yard? Let's go! So as I was walking around my yard and looking underneath the leaves, before I even got to underneath the leaves, I noticed this kind of dangling thing on this little stick right here. Can you see that? Kind of in the middle. It's kind of shiny looking. As I'm using my eyes, I can see that there's some yellow color on it. Uh, it's a little bit black, a little bit brown, and it's kind of an oval shape, and it's wiggling just a little bit. Can you figure out what that is? Well, that's a pupa. Um, so inside there is probably some sort of a butterfly. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's going to come out to be a butterfly. So a butterfly is going to start its life out as an egg. And then it, when it hatches out of its egg, it's going to be a larva. And it's going to look like a caterpillar. And it's going to chew and eat and chew and eat and chew and eat. And after it gets so big, after a couple of few weeks, it's going to rest. And it's going to make this pupa around itself. A lot of people call it it's a chrysalis. And in this stage, it's a pupa. So a chrysalis is around the outside, and the stage is a pupa. On the inside, he's going to change. And the body that he had is going to be different in the way it comes out. So it's going to end up growing six legs and wings. And it's going to have two antenna and three body parts when it comes out. And when it comes out in maybe another couple of weeks or week or so, it's going to be a full-grown butterfly. It's going to be its last stage and it's going to be an adult. So butterflies, like some other insects like bees and ants, have those four stages. They go egg, larva, pupa, adult. I'm going to get a little bit closer here, see if we can get a little bit bigger. Oh, now we're fuzzy. So 
So this butterfly is going to turn out to be something beautiful, I'm sure. I can't wait to watch it. So go around your yard and see if you can find anything like this that looks like something dangling, kind of uh, oval shaped. And they can be all sorts of colors too. Um, see if you can find any in your yard. You have to kind of look, really, really look. Because they're in hidden places and they're often camouflaged. So they're going to blend into their surroundings. So the color is going to be very, very similar. So they don't want to be eaten. So you watch for that. Oh, this is a really, really, really great find. I am super excited. Okay, see you next time. So we're in my garage. And we noticed something moving around. And it was not a shoe. There's all these shoes right here in my garage. And we were looking. And it was the littlest, teeniest, tiniest rabbit. I'm going to pan out just a little bit. Let's see if you can see a little bit better. There's a little baby cottontail rabbit. And one thing I notice about it, it has great big ears. And I think it's probably a little bit scared. Do you see the fur all over it? Keeping it nice and warm and snuggly. We saw the other day there was a nest of rabbits in our front yard. And it was in the grass. There was a little depression. And my son was mowing. And as he was mowing, he noticed something was moving around. So he stopped the lawnmower and he peeked in and he looked. And inside were about five or six little baby cottontail rabbits. And one of them decided he would go on an adventure. And one of those ended up here in my garage. Isn't it so cute? I think it's absolutely precious. One thing about cottontail rabbits is that they're pretty scared. And when they get scared, they freeze. And they say, you don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me. And they kind of just stop. And sometimes they're in a place where they're camouflaged. You know, they're in a place where it might be kind of black or kind of brown. And they kind of blend in so they're hard to see. I almost stepped on one once. And a bunch of, there was a bunch of leaves there. But this one here is just a little teeny baby. And so he's kind of scared so he's staying put. Sometimes when rabbits, though, get scared, they run fast. And they run in a zigzag pattern, so maybe it's harder to catch them. One thing about rabbits is that there are lots of them. And their moms could have, oh, several litters of little baby rabbits every year. And every time the mom might have four, five, or six little baby bunnies. And she'll put them in a hole in the ground a little bit kind of a depression, and then she'll cover them up with grass and fur, and then, and then they'll grow and they'll get bigger. And eventually, they'll go out on their own like these guys. Mom will take care of them for a little while, feed them some milk, but then they get bigger and then they can go out and they can eat all kinds of vegetables. So here's my little cottontail rabbit, and he's just resting in my hands at the moment. But if you can get a good look on the inside, you can see, or close to him, he's got great big eyes, he's got great big ears, he's got a nose that's kind of twitching, and he's also got some whiskers. And with those things, he'll use his senses to stay alive. He'll use his eyes to look around and see each other and to see danger. He'll use his ears to listen for danger. He'll use his nose to smell danger and to find some food. And the whiskers, he can feel and he can sense things around him. I'm going to go ahead and pick him up just a little bit. He's probably going to try to jump, but if you can see underneath him, he's got white fur, a little white tail. He's got great big back feet. What do you think those are good for? Good for jumping. He's got some little front paws here. He's covered in all sorts of fur. And one thing I like about this little guy, he's got this white stripe right here on his head. And we're in our yard right now, really close to that nest where he was born. And mom had him right here in this little nest in the ground. I see all this fur patch right here. There's a little hole in the ground and a bunch of grass. I'm gonna try to raise this up just a little bit 
and you could see the place where here was his, he was at, just all huddled up with the rest of his other five brothers and sisters staying safe till he decided to make his way into the world and go on an adventure. Okay, I've wandered around my yard a little bit more, not too far, and I've gone over to my flower beds over here. In the flower beds, there's not any flowers yet, but there's all kinds of mulch and leaves left over from last year, and I like to use my hands and feel around in there to see what I can find. So I'm gonna use my eyes and I'm gonna use my hands. So here we go. I'm gonna go start digging around in here. I'm gonna dig for all kinds of things, maybe with legs or no legs, and little things that maybe like to hide in this stuff, in the leaf litter that's decomposing. And I'm gonna just keep moving this around. And I'm not gonna be afraid of it either. Let's see, oh, here's one. Here's one right here. Put him in my hand. Let's see what he looks like. Is that good? good shot there? Can you see him? What color is he? It's kind of black, kind of gray. Got a whole bunch of legs. Do you know what this is? It's a roly poly. Some people call them pill bugs because they roll up like a pill when they're scared and get real round. He's running around on my arm and I can barely feel him. Now he's kind of tickling the hairs on my arm. He's kind of funny. What kind of creature is a roly poly? Is he an insect? Does he have six legs? Nope. He's an isopod and he's closely related to crabs and lobsters. In fact, he has 14 legs. He's a little bit different from an insect too in that he doesn't have two antennae. He has four antennae. You can only really see two, but he's got two little ones as well. These guys are great to have around because they eat all kinds of dead stuff. So they'll eat dead leaves, they'll even eat dead animals. Sometimes they'll even eat live things like strawberries or hostas or plants and sometimes I don't like that as much. But they're great to have around because they're part of the cleanup crew and they help more plants grow later on. And they do a lot of eating and they do a lot of pooping. And in fact, roly polies will even eat their own poop. Isn't that hilarious? But that's something they need to do because they need the extra minerals in their waste and so they'll eat those back up again. Isn't that funny? All right, so I want you to go take a look around. Look around in some places that are maybe damp, wet, underneath rocks, underneath leaves. Go underneath uh, some bark if you have them and go see if you can find some roly polies. Uh-oh, there he goes. Bye-bye. See you next stop. All right, so I walked around my yard a little bit and I used my eyes and I was looking down on the ground and I noticed the ground looked kind of strange, a little out of the ordinary. So I want you to look down here with me and see what's different about the ground down here. Let me get down on my knees and I noticed the soil down here is all bumped up. Some of the grass is missing, but it looks like there's something weird going on right here right here right down over here are you following me here okay down around over there the soil is all bumped up i wonder why the soil is bumped up like that i just don't know why i don't know maybe i do know do you know why do you have an idea let's think could it be an animal is dug around down underground yeah i think it yeah i think an animal has dug around underground uh, what kind of animal would do that? Could it be a snake that would do that? No. How about a bird? No. How about an eastern mole? Yeah, I bet it's an eastern mole. If you haven't seen a picture of one, I've got a picture of one right here. And let's see if you can see that. Can you see that mole? Have you got it? Okay, so an eastern mole is a mammal. It's covered with fur. It has four legs. It has little teeny tiny eyes and it has whiskers. Do you think a mole is going to have really good eyesight? 
No, it's not. It's going to spend over 90% of its life underground. So it's not going to be able to see very well at all. It doesn't need to see in the dark. Do you think that it has really great big ears to hear? No, they don't. They have little teeny ears and they kind of are small so they don't get all dirt trapped in there. So it helps to protect them. One thing that they do have that's really good is their sense of smell and their sense of feeling. They have great big whiskers to help feel them around underground and then their nose will help them to find food. Underground they're going to find all different kinds of worms and grubs and bugs to eat underground. Of course that's where they're going to live. So they have all kinds of those things to eat underground. I'm going to set the book down and then we're going to look at actually the tunnel and see if we can see what the tunnel looks like. I'm going to take my finger right here, got my little shovel, and I'm going to poke it down inside the hole. So I like to use my sense of feeling and we're going to go down inside this hole here and see how far down it goes. In fact, it doesn't go down very far at all. Moles will have permanent tunnels that are deeper down underground and in the summer, in the springtime when it warms up, they're going to have tunnels that are higher up towards the ground. You'll find more grubs and things like that up higher. And so that's where this mole has been running, up higher this time of year. Of course it's been wet and it's been raining and so the soil is nice and soft and loose. So I can see him going this way, I can see him going that way. So he's going to run all over my yard and I don't really seem to mind because they loosen the soil up. Uh, but my neighbor next door, he doesn't really like that so much. So they just kind of all come and run in my yard for a little bit. So they'll loosen the soil up and eventually the soil will, will or the grass will start growing back in the soil again. Okay? So moles are really, really fun, I think, to have in your yard. And I want you to go to look in your yard. See if you can find any places where the soil is different. Go ahead and take your finger and see if you can find their mole run, their little tunnel underground. All right, go give it a try. Okay, so far we haven't found anything that we could really smell. So I wandered over to my neighbor's yard and he doesn't mind if I'm over here, we just talked. And I found a blooming tree. Uh, it's a fruit tree that he has. And I want to smell the flowers. So I see some white petals here and there's a little bit of brown on the outside. Hmm, looks like it's a little bit dry, but hopefully they're fresh enough I can give it a smell. Oh, guess what? Look what's inside here. Can you see that? There's a fly on the inside. They like the smell too. So I'm going to give it a smell. Using my nose, of course. Mmm, smells so good. Some flowers are going to smell real fragrant. Some of them downright stink, and some of them don't smell really very much at all. Just depends on that particular flower. But this one is one that smells really, really sweet. Okay. So I want you to go around, go around your house, and see if you can find any flowers that are blooming and give them a smell. Okay, so we've gone around to my backyard by my shed, and right down on the ground, there's something different growing, something other than grass. So I want you to take a look down here with me. I'm going to move my finger down here. And I want you to see this funny stuff growing right here. Can you get a good look at it? Can you see it? Uh, if you notice the colors, we'll look at that first with our eyes. I see kind of a bright green color, and then I see kind of a blue green color. Can you see the difference? I also notice that it's growing lower, and it's going to be different than this grass that's around it. It's really, really kind of tight together and just stuck on the ground. Do you guys know what this is? This is moss. And moss is a very simple plant. And it doesn't have any roots going down in the ground. It doesn't have any real stems. It doesn't have any real leaves. It just grows real tight on the ground or on wet places. So it'll grow and flourish in places that are wet. Oftentimes you'll see them on the north side of a building or um, in places that, that uh, are wet. So this guy here happens to be in a place where it's really, really wet. It stays wet here by my shed and it's going to bloom and grow when it's nice and wet. What do you think happens to it when it dries up? when a rainfall stops. It's gonna dry up and it's gonna shrink and it's just gonna wait until it gets more moisture again and then it's gonna start growing again. So what moss does is it's gonna reproduce with what's called spores. It doesn't have flowers on it, 
they're like spores like a mushroom and they're gonna kind of come up and then spread out so if you look around my yard here and if you can kind of pan around I can see different places where there's more moss all over on this wet ground where there isn't any grass growing so while I'm here what I like to do is to feel it I like to rub it it's nice and soft kind of feels like carpet so it feels really good on your fingers uh, it feels cool too because the soil is kind of cold and wet right here so it's something really good to feel i don't know about smelling it i might break off a little piece right here Let's see if i can give it a smell let's see if it smells like anything uh, nope just kind of just smells like soil you think i could listen to it you think it would make a noise no, moss doesn't make a noise. You think I should taste this? No, I shouldn't taste this. Most plants you shouldn't just taste. In fact, I would suggest not tasting any of them unless you know that it's something growing in your garden or you got it at the grocery store. So I hope you had fun today using your senses. I want you to go around your own yard. Of course, get permission first. Maybe take a grown up with you and go explore and see what kind of fun things you can find in your yard today. Give it a try. See you at the Nature Center sometime soon. Bye-bye.